Good morning, and welcome to worship at Christ Reformed United Church of Christ, an open and affirming congregation of the United Church of Christ. Um, glad to see we're still wearing masks. I know you like it as much as I do, which is absolutely not at all. Uh, our numbers have ticked down a nano bit. bit. The numbers in Washington County are not doing well at all, so um, encourage friends, relatives, and total strangers in this whole area to do what they need to do so that we can get all of our numbers down. Beginning next week, you'll see it in the bulletin, but we're only two weeks away from 9-11, so I'll let you know. Uh, the worship team and music are putting together a video only commemorative service for 9-11. It will premiere at noon on September 11th, and then it'll be available on YouTube or um, Facebook whenever you want to see it. And it's a service of prayers and scripture and music to remember that date. And the other thing that's coming up, I can't believe we're, we're so close. Um, in two weeks, it'll be September 12th, and that will be We'll be returning to having a contemporary service at 8.15. It'll just be in here. Uh, and then the regular service at 9.30. 10.30, yes. 10.30. You know, it's the 8.15 that's got me kind of, uh, that's so early. <laughs> I don't have any other announcements that I'm aware of. Nobody's waving their hand. So let us quiet ourselves and listen to the prelude as we prepare for worship.
morning, church. Listen to the good news. God is with us this day and every day. Because God is with us, we can face each day with courage. We can find some good in everything, for we are never completely alone. God's goodness sometimes comes as a trickle, sometimes pushing spurt, pulsing spurts, and sometimes a mighty flood. But always God is with us. We worship you, O oh God, for your goodness. We praise you with our songs. We seek you in our prayers. We offer ourselves to you because you are our God. Holy God, we come full of our own personal experiences from the past week to join in common worship and mutual care. Help us to bear one another's burdens, pray for one another's concerns, and see with a new and clear perspective through the lens of scripture and tradition. Give us faith in your compassion, hope in your future, and love for all your children. Amen. Music that goes with the word for the hymn. May the peace of Christ be with you. And also with you. Stand up, greet one another, wave to one another, yell across the room, whatever's required, <laughs> to greet one another with the peace of Christ this morning. <laughs> you may be seated. In the joy of being gathered together in the peace of Christ, let us come together and pray our prayer of confession. Merciful God, whose care never ceases, we come to you as we are. We are tired from trying to do more than we can manage. We are anxious about problems that go unresolved. We are worried about events beyond our control. We do not easily let go. For mistakes we cannot redeem, for tasks left undone, for uncertain goals. We need your forgiveness and ask for your understanding. 
for recovery of strength and passion. We pray for your spirit, for fullness of life, generous spirit, hearts, and contented souls. We pray to be followers of Jesus. In your mercy, restore us and lead us. Amen. And now let us take a moment of silent prayer to speak to God about our own sins and shortcomings. There is no greater joy in the heart of God than the moment when a son or daughter opens to the gift of forgiveness. God's spirit reaches out to assure us of welcome in Christ. In the name of Jesus Christ, we are forgiven by God's grace. With great joy, we are made alive. Thanks be to God. Amen. Good morning, church. Our psalm reading this morning comes from Psalm 15. Listen to the word of the Lord. Lord, who can live in your sacred tent? Who can stay on your holy mountain? Anyone who lives without blame and does what is right, they speak the truth from their heart. They don't tell lies about other people. They don't do wrong to their neighbors. They don't say anything bad about them. They hate evil people but they honor those who have respect for the Lord. They keep their promises even when it hurts. They do not change their minds. They lend their money to poor people without charging interest. They don't accept money to harm those who aren't guilty. Anyone who lives like that will always be secure. Amen? And now can I have the children come up front, please? I need one of you to hold the mic for me. Okay. How is everybody this morning? Good. Good? Good, Good morning, church. So I have some thoughts here I want to share. I want to talk about some things that are imaginary, but I want to know how you would feel about them, okay? Everybody ready? Okay. So let's say... You went to a friend's house, and it was so beautiful out that morning, and you went and you played, and you had a really wonderful time. Then it was time to go home, and you had to walk, and guess what? Lightning and thunder and hail was coming down, and your friend said to you, well, I'm glad you were here. I hope you have a nice trip home. How would that make you feel? Because you had to walk. Sad. Sad? Why? Because he had to walk home, and there was rain. Oh, okay. What could they have done differently? Anybody? What do you think your friends could have done differently? They could have let us stay. They could let you stay. All right. All right, next one. You're in school, and you're out on the playground, and you're running around with all your friends, and you're having a great time, and then Isaac pushes you over, and you scrape up your knee, and you run to the teacher going, Isaac, hurt me, and then blood's running down your leg, and your teacher says, uh, it's going to be okay, and then they walk away. How does that make you feel? Sad. Sad again. Why are you sad this time? Because um, um, I pushed you. You pushed me? Okay. <laughs> and then the teacher just walked away. And the teacher walked away. Okay. Could they have done something to help me maybe because I'm bleeding? Yes. What could they have done? Sent you to the nurse. Sent me to the nurse. Okay. You know the reason I bring these up because... As Christians, we're always told they will, that we will show people that we are Christians by our love. Now, we're, was there being love shown in any of those scenarios? No? So what we need to do as Christians is we need to live a life of love. We need to show everybody every day how much we actually love them and not just let people walk away. So it's okay to say, you know, I hope you have a really good day even though you're probably hungry. 
but wouldn't it be nicer to just give you some food so that you might be able to have a better day, right? So that's what I want you to think about this week. This week, I want you to go out there, and I want you to see somebody who might be in need, and I want you to show them you are a Christian by your love and help them. Does that make sense? Thank you, Lord. So we're going to say a quick prayer. Lord, thank you for these beautiful children here who we know, Lord, want to follow in your footsteps and in your ways, and we know that they want to be a light in this world that is full of darkness. So we thank you each and every day for them, and we pray that they will always show that they are Christians by their love. Amen? Thank you. Let me get back to your seats. Just as you are, hear the Spirit call, come just as The scripture reading this morning comes from the book of James, chapter 1, verses 17 through 27. Every good and perfect gift is from God. The kind of gift comes down from the Father who created the heavenly lights. These lights create shadows that move, but the Father does not change like these shadows. God chose to give us new birth through the message of truth 
He wanted us to be the first harvest of his new creation. My dear brothers and sisters, pay attention to what I say. Everyone should be quick to listen, but they should be slow to speak. They should be slow to get angry. Human anger doesn't produce the holy life God wants. So get rid of everything that is sinful. Get rid of the evil that is all around us. Don't be too proud to accept the word that is planted in you. It can save you. Don't just listen to the word. You fool yourselves if you do that. You must do what it says. Suppose someone listens to the word but doesn't do what it says. Then they are like a person who looks at their face in a mirror. After looking at themselves, they leave, and right away they forget what they look like. But suppose someone takes a good look at the perfect law that gives freedom, and they keep looking at it. Suppose they don't forget what they've heard, but they do what the law says. Then this person will be blessed in what they do. Suppose people think their beliefs and how they live are both right, but they don't control what they say. Then they are fooling themselves. Their beliefs and way of life are not worth anything at all. Here are the beliefs and way of life that God, our Father, accepts as pure and without fault. When widows are in trouble, take care of them. Do the same for children who have no parents, and don't let the world make you unpure. May God add understanding to his holy word. One of the comedians on late night television made slow reading a news story, one of his regular comedy skits. He'd read some headline or excerpt from some news story in the fashion of a news reporter, and then he would read it again slowly to see if it helped make any sense of the article. Today's scripture passage isn't controversial in that sense, nor is it something to ridicule. However, three or four lines are worth hearing again slowly so we can really hear the advice James gives his faith congregation. You must understand this, my beloved. Let everyone be quick to listen, slow to speak, slow to anger, for your anger does not produce God's righteousness. And then the familiar one, be doers of the word and not hearers who deceive themselves. And then at the very end, if any think themselves religious and do not bridle their tongues but deceive their hearts, their religion is worthless. Alrighty then. James kind of spelled it out in pretty clear um, English for us, Greek for his hearers. Um, we, we hear those words, and we know that walking the talk is more involved than Twitter responses. Rants on Facebook, and I can do them, or memes on Facebook, for that matter, which I can forward with great alacrity if I want to. James is telling his congregation that there is good news to share in the world and that they need to do it by their actions. Do more, talk less. Dispel the anger by doing something positive to change a situation. This passage has been dis misinterpreted over the centuries as suggesting that we earn our salvation through the works that we do. There was a time when doing and believing got so messed up, it, well, it took an Augustinian monk hammering some statements on a door of one of the leading churches in Germany to get people's attention. That man was Martin Luther, and that action initiated the Protestant Reformation. 
And Martin Luther knew that salvation was God's gift of grace and was not dependent on our good deeds. So we're not doing these good deeds in order to get God's salvation. But the writer of the letter of James is telling his congregation that in response to your receiving and knowing about God's redemptive power made known in Jesus, that you need to act like it has some effect on our lives. Show what you know. In 1918, 18, excuse me, 1879, the hymn that we're going to hear at the end of the service was composed and released. The title, O Master, Let Me Walk With Thee. Many here, I certainly did, grew up with this as one of the staples of congregational singing. Its tunes and its words suggest at first a glance at a meditative walk with Jesus along life's ways. It would often be used at the end of the service where it was hoped someone would, in the vernacular of my youth, dedicate their lives to Jesus. And all of that was perfectly well and good. But it belies the story of the minister who wrote the hymn and the congregation which he served. That song and his story really do give some shape to the words from James to be doers of the word and not hearers only. Sometimes it's the little things that we do that count, but sometimes you can actually do a whole lot more, and we are called to do what we can do. Solomon Washington Gladden was born in Pottsgrove, Pennsylvania, a small town just northeast of Philadelphia. He grew up then in a family farm in northern New York. Although he graduated from Williams College, he never received formal seminary training. He began his career editing magazines. And sometimes, being need being what it is, he served as minister to some churches within the congregational churches in this country, our ancestors in the United Church of Christ, first in New York and then in Massachusetts. And then in 1882, he was called as the senior pastor of the first congregational church of Columbus, Ohio, which was then located on the north side of Capitol Square. And he served there for 35 years. Now think about that time period. Ohio was a northern state bordering with Kentucky just across the river. The Civil War had only ended 17 years before. The differences that had happened because of the Civil War and what led up to it did not go away over that course of time. In fact, they still haven't. By the 1880s, America was in the Industrial Revolution. Things that we take for granted were being invented and industrial centers were being created and the health and safety dynamics of business were very real. Things like child labor and women working long hours and everybody working, well, we have an eight hour day. It was closer to a 10 hour day in that time. The Gilded Age was in full force. How do you proclaim the gospel of Jesus Christ from the courthouse square in such a time? Do you as a church act in such a way to encourage the wealthy and powerful to find comfort in your ministry and fill up your pews and help you give money and be rather passive and everything? Or do you pay attention to the working conditions of the urban poor and the rural poor and yes, in Columbus, Ohio, that's a valid question, just as it was in New York City or Chicago. What does, O oh Master, let me walk with thee in lowly paths of service free mean to such a day and time? Well, Washington Gladden just wasn't content to preach the gospel to people who would listen on Sunday mornings and go about their everyday lives the way they wanted primarily making money at the expense of others. No doubt the church served many a meal to the poor and passed down used clothing to those in need, but Washington Gladden and his church were at the forefront of doing 
something to change the systems that oppress so many people. He preached the word. He preached the gospel. But he and his congregation did the gospel. And what did that look like? Well, his parishioners, with his help, established two settlement houses to give support and for the homeless and the poor. They launched new churches in underserved communities in and around Columbus. At a time of religious bigotry, and it was very popular, the Know Nothing Party at that time, he condemned the anti-Catholic rhetoric. In 1883 and 1884, he was known for his success in fighting a corrupt political ring that had its headquarters in New York, but was all across the country. You've read about it in your history books, the Tweed Ring, politics run amok. He arbitrated for telegraphers' strike and the Hawking Valley coal strike. He ministered to students at Ohio State University. John D. Rockefeller wanted to give his church $100,000. That's in 1880, that's real money. And he argued against receiving it because it was tainted because of the practices within the Rockefeller Corporation at that time, even though it would go to the foreign mission program. He made alliances and friends with national leaders such as Theodore Roosevelt, and Jane Addams, and Woodrow Wilson, and William Jennings Bryan. This is going on not in New York City, not in Chicago, but in Columbus, Ohio, not the biggest city in the whole states, probably not the biggest church within the congregational churches, but they were actively doing the gospel in their day and time. And how did that affect them? Well, their congregation grew and grew and grew. It seems like walking the talk is an effective means of church growth. Even in 2021, we know that people are looking at the church and wondering about our commitment to the ways of Jesus when they don't see us in action. The website of his church in Columbus includes these words and recognize that they were written in the late 1800s and reflect the language of the time. I am fain to believe that the time is drawing near when the Christian church will be able to discern and declare this simple truth that religion is nothing but friendship. Friendship with God and with all people. Religion is friendship. Friendship first with the great companion of whom Jesus told us is always nearer to us than we are to ourselves and whose inspiration and help is the greatest fact of human experience. To be in harmony with God's purposes, to be open to his suggestions, to be in conscious fellowship with him. This is the religion on its Godward side. Then turning manward, friendship sums it all up. To be friends with everybody, to fill every human relationship with the spirit of friendship. Is there anything more than this that the wisest and the best of men and women can hope to do? Looking back at the words from the letter written by James, you must understand this, my beloved, let everyone be quick to listen, slow to speak, slow to anger, for your anger does not produce God's righteousness. The church in Columbus listened to the conditions of people, thought about what it needed to be said, and then said it effectively, not in reaction, but they put their anger with a situation to constructive solutions, such as those settlement houses and the other things that they did. They turned their anger into action. Be it the doers of the word and not hearers who deceive themselves, that church was actively involved in making the conditions of life in their community and in their region better. 
If any think of themselves religious and do not bridle their tongues but deceive their hearts, their religion is worthless. Washington Gladden encouraged his parishioners to look upon one another in their community, in their region, in their state. We would go further because we are more connected than Columbus, Ohio was in those days and time. In the spirit of friendship, and although the term beloved community would emerge from another leader 75 years later, and then again with John Lewis lately as he would speak of the beloved community of Martin Luther King, that's the way of life he envisioned. Living in relationship with God, the up and down part of the cross, and living in relationship with each other, the horizontal part of the cross following the teachers, uh, teachings of Jesus, living as friends, one to another, is the pattern life that's possible, but we have to be willing. O oh, Master, let me walk with thee in lowly paths of service free. Tell me thy secret. Help me bear the strain of toil, the fret of care. Amen. The Apostle Paul wrote to the church in Corinth, the point is this, the one who sows sparingly will also reap sparingly, and the one who sows bountifully will also reap bountifully. Each of you must give as you have made up your mind, not reluctantly or under compulsion, for God loves a cheerful giver. Let us cheerfully give our offering for the work of God's church. that you will be with me when I'm standing in the fire I will not be overcome through the valley of the shadow I will not be is breaking through the dark of night will not overtake me I am pressing into you Lord you fight my every battle and I
You call me as your own, oh, you amaze me. You redeem me. You call me as your own. You amaze me, redeem me. You call me as your own. You're my strength. You're my defender. You're my refuge in the storm. Through these trials, you've always been faithful. You bring healing to my soul. I am not alone. I am not alone. You will go before me. You will never leave me. I am not alone. I am not alone. You will go before me. You will never leave me. Oh, I am not alone. I am not alone. You will go before me. You will never leave me. I am not alone. I am not alone. You will go before me. You will never leave me. I am not alone. I am not alone. You will go before me. You will never leave me. praying together, God, receive these gifts and give us open hands. Fill our lives and give us open hearts. Touch us with your word and give us open minds. Bless this church and give them open doors. Amen. Let me get my list because we as a congregation are holding a lot of concerns in our hearts today and some joys. So we'll start with some of the joys and birthdays. Mary Lou Dent, Emily Hill, Lori James, Anita Link, Paisley Murphy, Greg Shipley, Christopher Bays, Stephanie Biddle, Ron Blaine, Samantha Estes, Bob Gailey, Bailey Noble, Theodore Whedon. Another one that's headed, I've got to get this. <laughs> For those who are not already aware, Christine, so we get to embarrass her since she's right here. Christine Fontaine begins graduate school tomorrow to obtain her master, I guess of science, that I'm not sure, degree, clinical mental health counselor. Congratulations, have a great school year.
and for the concerns. This week we remember Lieutenant Andrew Stu Alcorn IV, Frederick County Police, who died this past week. We ask prayers for his personal family and friends, for the law enforcement family of Frederick County, and for all those who knew him. We remember the service men and women who died this week facilitating the evacuation at the Kabul airport. Keep their families and friends and all service persons in your prayers, particularly right now at the final stages in this very dangerous mission for those who still remain in Afghanistan. Be with those who are wounded in this operation and grant your healing hand to them. Prayers for all of those who are living in fear and confusion and uncertainty in Afghanistan, unsure as to what will come next. We lift up the people on the Gulf Coast. I said we had a heavy duty, and that's just on national and internet, local news. People on the Gulf Coast that are in danger of a Category 4 hurricane due to hit today the 16th anniversary of when Katrina hit in the same area. Be with them as they meet this challenge, particularly as they meet this challenge with high COVID numbers and hospitals that can't be evacuated because there's no place to evacuate them. We have some that are individuals. Diane Esworth, Ellsworth, Esworth, they sent this message earlier in the week about her cousin. I found out my cousin, Clint Hutchison, is in the hospital with COVID pneumonia and having a very hard time breathing. He's currently at Polk ER, waiting for a room to open up in Rome, Georgia, so they can transfer him. Kathleen knows a lot of people who are in need of prayer. Her brother-in-law, for one, has some health issues. Her cousin, Autumn, is struggling with some other health concerns. So please keep Autumn and her family in your prayers. Her friend, Mark, has been in the hospital and has some needed prayers. Prayers for her cousin, Ruth, and her friend Mary Beth texted her that her brother Tony needs prayer. He's been diagnosed with a very aggressive prostate cancer. It's in his lungs, bladder, and bones. The prognosis is not, prognosis is not good. Prayers with Jean Frock, who's going to be seeing a doctor about some possible surgery. Prayers for Jean's granddaughter, Caitlin, which is on the lighter note, along with Christine. While Christine goes for her first day of class, Caitlin has just begun <coughs> excuse me, her college career at Goucher, so prayers for her on this new journey. Prayers in remembrance of Dottie Heffer, Huffer Plummer, who passed away peacefully in the night this past week. Please keep her sister Josie in your prayers and the rest of her family and all those who knew her. Sue asks prayers for a friend and her whole family who are quarantined because of COVID. Catherine Yinling asks, has, needs your prayer. She's the daughter of Jessica Yinling, a former member of our church, and she's currently receiving treatment for an eating disorder and is so she needs her prayers on this journey. Because I've added them, we're going to go in this order. Found out this morning that Gary Bell needs your prayers. He took a fall. Uh, and if I don't get all of that, I'm going to ask Gail, because she was telling me beforehand. He's in the hospital with this fall. Uh, apparently a rib and a lung are impacted in it. So prayers for Gary, prayers for Connie, and prayers for their medical team. What was that? 
Oh, oh, I didn't catch it, you know. He's in Missouri. Oh. oh no. But it's, it's a bike accident. <sighs> Today is a day of goodbyes. And that's both a joy and a concern. It's a concern because we don't want to say goodbye to David and Ann Grieger. Um, they moved this week to their new home. David wrote, sadly this Sunday will be our last one at church. Movers come Tuesday to pack and we'll be on our way to a new life in Annapolis. We have already enjoyed our past eight years at church, having been blessed by the fellowship, music, friendships, and learning. Our blessings go with you on this trip. You will be missed. You will be a blessing elsewhere. That's my list. Do we have some more? Someone and the concerns over an epileptic epi epi epilepsy episode and uh, what's in the future, but prayers for him, his family, his friends, his uh, co-workers that are concerned, and anybody else. I saw Bob. You're going to have... <laughs> Bob Gailey's son, and they're where? That's what I thought you said, New Orleans. Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> yes, Sue. Absolutely. Yeah, we, we, we send these messages back and forth, and sometimes, it, yeah, exactly. I suspect some of you know other people that you choose not to make public, so let us join together in a moment of silent prayer and lift up joys and concerns from people you know. Merciful God, our burdens feel so heavy this morning. Grief, mourning, sadness, anxiety, concern, uncertainty are heavy on our hearts as we have shared our concerns this morning. Jesus told his disciples that when they, that Jesus would take their burdens and sadness off their hearts and minds and shoulders, if only we ask. This morning we claim that promise and give the burdens on our hearts to you. God of consolation, we pray your holy comfort will descend on those whose lives have been so altered by death and destruction. God of healing, we pray for all the healthcare workers in our area and our country and around the world who are caring for those stricken by COVID. We pray for the families affected by this virus. We give you our anxiety as the Delta variant cases increase in this area. O oh God, in the midst of sorrow, there is joy. And so we send our friends, Anne and David Grieger, off to Annapolis with our love and blessing as they begin this new phase of their lives. We are grateful for the time they were with us and we know that they will be a blessing to others in their new home. We give you thanks for the fun that we have had this summer, for the times we have seen people 
whom we haven't seen for such a long time. For barbecues and picnics, trips to the beach and the mountains, opportunities to eat meals together. Thank you. Thank you for the beauty all around us. With hearts full, knowing the things that have concerned us have been put into your great love, we join together to pray as Jesus taught us, saying, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread. And forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. If you'll look in your bulletin, you'll see the words to that hymn that Washington Gladden wrote for his congregation and for us. James gave some advice to his congregation back in the first century. The letter from James gives advice to us. Go walk your talk. Be doers of the word. Don't just listen to it. Be love. Show what you believe. And may the blessing of God, creator Christ, and Holy Spirit rest with you now and always. Amen.